All right. I am going to call back to order a meeting of the North Andover School Committee Thursday, February 3rd, 2022, when we are returning from executive session. I will ask you to please rise and join us with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I would remind people uh, if they have an electronic device to uh, try to silence that. Uh, I will start with any public comment uh, in the room. And seeing none, uh, Ms. Picard, I believe we have two requests for call-ins. We do. Is that a statement or a question? Yes, we right, do. Okay. <laughs> I know you had them, so I was like, hmm. Uh, if you could connect us in to call in number one, that'd be great. All right. Um, so our first caller is Abby Murphy. And if you can help us remind her that we have three minutes. Yep, and I just spoke to her a moment ago. Okay, perfect. I try to call people in advance just so the public knows. I try to call people in advance so I make sure that their phone number is working and um, alert them to the fact that when we call, it's from a random number created by Google, so it may not be a 978 or, or a known number. All right. So my computer says that we are calling now. Hello, Abby, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi. Welcome. Um, this is Helen Picard calling from the North Andover School Committee. You are in the public session now for your public comment. And please try to remember to keep um, your comments to three minutes and start with okay, your thanks. address. Um, hi, I'm Abby Murphy, 96 Amberville Road. Um, I'm just calling in to leave a public comment um, to just please ask for consideration to push back on Department of Education on removing or at least making math optional for my children and the children of North Andover Public Schools. Um, both of my children came into school at the time of pandemic um, my oldest is now in second grade. He basically has moved on with his life, except that every day we worry about the social and emotional impact of the continued restrictions on him at school. Um, actually, right now, I'm sitting in the car for my son's basketball waiting for him. So he's moved on. He kind of has gotten his groove in school, but every day we worry about it. Um, and the same for my kindergartner who's learning to read, who has had days where he's been on the bus from 7.35 and hasn't even gotten off till 4.15 like the other day when his bus got into a small car accident where he's worn the mask for over seven hours that day and then had a meltdown that night because he's only five years old. Um, we just as parents are noticing that we, mo we worry more now about what continuing with masks on our children are doing towards doing to them than we do about the risks of COVID. And we feel that, you know, give it all of the things that have changed recently, we would like for the North Andover Public Schools to just really consider how to move forward with trying to make that something that's optional for our children. That's, that's it. Okay. Thank you. And we'll disconnect now, Abby. Thank you so much. Thank you. And our second caller um, is Rebecca Strunk.
Hello, is this Rebecca? This is. This is Helen Picard of the North Andover School Committee. You are Hi. on um, in our public session during our public comment, and we welcome your comment. If you could please start with your street address, and then please try to keep your comment to three minutes. Absolutely. Rebecca Strong, 657 Forest Street. Good evening. I read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People in both my graduate and undergraduate and, and graduate master's programs. One of the habits that has always struck me as most important is that of being proactive. That leads me to ask the following question. What have you done or will you do as a collective whole to be proactive and put pressure on DESE to lift the mask mandate specifically for our youngest learners? Waiting until the end of the month to hear what DESE, a bureaucratic unelected body, is going to do is unacceptable. Dozens of states across the nation, including those in which we have family, are going to work school, church, the library, and city hall without draconian mask or vaccine restrictions. They have been doing so for months and are living in freedom, not fear. As elected officials, it is our duty, or it is your duty and responsibility to be the voice of our students, to advocate for all of them, even if what you are advocating for may be controversial or unpopular. I, along with many other parents within the community, are tired of hearing that your hands are tied. I know that if DESE mandates are not followed, the purse strings get pulled tighter. Prioritizing money over physical and mental well-being of our school children is unconscionable. I sincerely believe you know that these mandates are wrong, and many want to know when you will stand up and speak out. As of January 31st, there are a mere 22 students and staff across eight schools who are in isolation for COVID. That is less than one half of 1% of the entire student and staff population. Does this warrant universal masking of the entire student and staff body? The answer should be a resounding no. Tying vaccination rates to masking mandates is wrong, especially when two thirds of the active cases as reported by the Board of Health just last week were vaccinated. Enough is enough. Waiting until the end of the month for a DESE decision on the mandate is not acceptable. Whenever the mask mandates are lifted, the expectation is that a swift action is taken and immediate communication is released stating that masking our school children will be a choice. We as a community demand accountability. The time is now to do what is right for our children, not tomorrow, not next week, and not the end of the month, today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, I'm gonna disconnect the call now. Okay. That is all, Mr. McDevitt. All right, thank you. Uh, I was just going to say there were only two calls, no one in person. Uh, so we will continue on with the agenda. Uh, there is no recognition tonight, although I do think uh, we may have some uh, blockbuster recognitions uh, next time. Absolutely. All right, okay. Uh, number five, we're going to move on to the consent agenda for the meeting of, I'm sorry, January 27, 2022. Okay, so motion made by Ms. Mabley, seconded by Ms. Petrowski. Any discussion on the minutes as presented in the packet? Okay, hearing none, seeing none, I'll have a roll call vote. I will start virtually, Ms. Picard? Yes. Ms. Petrowski? Yes. Ms. Vitsky? Yes. Uh, Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So 5 0, we have minutes from the 27th of January 2022. And now we are on to the highlight of the night, uh, the student report, Lindsay and Ethan. Uh, thank you very much. We appreciate that uh, nice comment. Uh, first, we would like to update you on the NAS 22 future plans page. Uh, some more students have uh, committed to where they would like to attend college in the fall. And so we'd like to uh, provide that for you. Uh, Summer Gordon plans to attend Bates College with a major in biology and a commitment to play D3 field hockey. Uh, Nick Ankiewicz uh, plans to attend Endicott College with a major in finance and a commitment to play D3 football. George Chinakis plans to attend Arizona State University with a major in business. Ashwin Callahan plans to attend Johns Hopkins University with a major in public health and a commitment to run track at a D3 level. Anna Nold plans to attend Simmons University with a major in biology, a minor in neuroscience, and on a nursing track. Maura Lambert plans to attend San Diego State University with a major in elementary education. And finally, Avery Bennett plans to attend Roger Williams University with a major in architecture and a commitment to play D3 volleyball. 
Uh, we will continue to update you as more entries are added. Uh, if you'd like to follow that Instagram page, it's called uh, NAHS22 Future Plans. Uh, it's very cool to look at. Uh, next, we have the Drama Guild. Uh, next week is the musical Mamma Mia. It will run for three days and it will have four shows total. Uh, on each day, there will be one show at 7 p.m. And on the final day, there will be a 2 p.m. show. Those dates for the shows are February 10th, February 11th, and February 12th. Tickets are being sold at the high school and at lunch and will be sold at the door. Uh, and we hope you'll be able to attend the Drama Guild's first in-person musical in two years. And all attendees are asked to please wear masks for safety reasons. Uh, this month marks the start of Black History Month and the Black Students Union has worked hard with, with decorations and posters all around the school. And in addition, are making morning announcements. Props them and their hard work and let's do our best by re-educating ourselves on Black history, Black pride, and Black achievement. Tuesday was the start of the Lunar New Year and the Asian Pacific Islanders Club at the high school celebrated by collecting wishes and will link them up and hang them up around the school. They also sold red, black, red bags, which is a custom and a tradition to send money to your relatives uh, to send them luck in the new year. Um, and we have raised a total of $65 and we will donate to an organization of their choosing this Friday. In addition, the North River High School math team had a competition today against Andover. And as always, the rivalry is pretty intense. Uh, so we're excited to see who comes out on top this time. The NAS Interact Club is having a bake sale on the 10th and 11th to raise money for care packages for women in shelters. This will be held during all three lunches at the high school. And the scoreboard for sports as of Wednesday, February 2nd, the girls ski team, um, the varsity team beat Haverhill at an 89 to 46, and their varsity team also beat Newburyport at a 93 to 42. Their vars varsity gymnastics beat Tewksbury uh, with a score of 132.65 over 132.3. Um, they also beat Lowell at 132.65 over a 131.65. Wow. Um, and sadly to admit, our wrestling team lost to Tewksbury at a 39 to 36. And our boys ice hockey varsity team beat Newton um, over a 32. And congrats to the gymnastics athletes and their managers on their senior night as they've worked hard all for all that they've earned this year. Um, and tonight there is a varsity basketball game at Bill Ricca Memorial High School. And slightly earlier today, there was a game um, of a junior varsity girls basketball team. The freshman boys basketball game at Lawrence High School um, is tonight. Uh, okay. There's also a varsity boys indoor track meet. Good luck to all our teams and athletes. One final note on sports, uh, the spring registration is now open. So for any students who might be watching, check your email for more information from Mr. Nugent. And finally, the registration for AP exams is open. Uh, I believe the cutoff date is February 14th. Uh, so to any students who wish to take any AP exams, please register uh, before that date. Uh, more information is in all North Denver High School students' emails. Thank you, and that is all we have for the student report tonight. All right. Thank you, Lindsay and Ethan. Uh, we'll just uh, see if the committee has any quick questions for you, if that's okay. All right, uh, staying virtually, Ms. Picard. All set, thank you very much, great report. Ms. Petrovsky. Uh, no questions, thanks, nice job, guys. I'm sorry, I'm looking at you and I didn't say it, Ms. Vitsky. No questions, thank you. Um, all set, thank you very much, appreciate you being here. Uh, so again, just great job. Uh, I really wanna thank you guys uh, for for attending as, as well. I, I know it's uh, tough with a lot of demands on your schedule. Um, I know that you guys are gonna be working on that uh, kind of end of semester summary that's there. So um, awesome, thank you very much uh, for putting in some extra legwork and uh, uh, dedication uh, to that as well. And then I really just wanna call out if people haven't started to follow that um, North Andover 2022 uh, future plans, um, it is awesome. It, it, I don't know who is uh, doing that, and I didn't realize that this was an every year type of thing, but I love seeing the kids with their uh, senior photos and where they're going. So um, I, again, I don't know what, what group is kind of managing that, but, but that is a, a, a 
great service that you're doing and uh, definitely a lot of work. So, Ethan, it sounds like you, or it looks like you, you. Yeah, sorry, I just have a quick answer to that. Uh, it's the class of 2022 officers and advisors who uh, created that and are updating it. So, obviously, thanks to them for getting all of that information yeah. uh, and promoting our students. Perhaps should have known it was an officer. So, <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you, guys. You're free to stay. You're free to go. You're. <laughs> you're free. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Uh, we're going to turn over to Dr. Gilligan uh, for a health update, uh, or in the superintendent report. I think you're starting with a health update. Sorry. We are. I'd like to welcome uh, Director Barzak here tonight, and uh, Dr. Mealy, if you could put the presentation up. There we go. <laughs> uh, welcome, Cheryl. Thank you. Happy Thursday again. Um, so I'll start with the at-home rapid test program, which um, started last week with staff. And this week, the student delivery will be tomorrow. All the tests have been delivered to the schools. And if we don't have school tomorrow, it'll be Monday. But as of now, they'll be um, at home in the backpacks tomorrow. Um, again. Sure. Again, this is a free weekly voluntary um, program. Doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not. It's an opt-in program. And Desi just this week um, said, yes, people can also use it for symptomatic testing at home, which we had said anyway. But I just wanted to say now, like it's, it's, now it's in the, um, the regulations. Um, symptomatic in school continues with consent. We had... We had a lot of positives, as you know, with our numbers um, in early January. Lately, we've probably tested 70 or so students this last week, M much fewer uh, positives, um, six, I think we had this week of the symptomatic testing. Again, all positive re um, results should get reported online on the test notification forum. And positive cases, also, you should contact your healthcare provider. Positive cases at home. So here's our, our number for today, um, 22 cases that has definitely decreased. Just of note, we did meet as a COVID task force. So Brian from the health department was with us and he told us the numbers in town are also decreasing, which is great. Um, but that a lot of, uh, just be cautious that a lot of home tests aren't being reported. So for example, there are 76 students absent from the high school today. We only have three COVID cases. There may be more COVID cases that we just don't know about. But still, the numbers are decreasing, so that's a good sign. And here's a graph of where we were uh, early January and where we're heading now, which is great. And then um, this is the breakdown every week. The bottom row is what we reported to DESE yesterday, 39 um, active COVID cases in the schools, staff and students. So certainly um, heading that in the right direction. Super fast. Well, that was 90 last week, and then am I reading that correct? 90 last week and 39 this week. Yes. Okay. All right. I just uh, trying to make sure I lined it up correctly. Thank you. Yes. Here's our vaccination rate. When I was here last Thursday, there was a clinic going on, so those numbers are uh, reflected in the in this new chart. Um, these are numbers as of today. And I mentioned last week that the health department is ordering Pfizer vaccines so that we can offer vaccine clinics in elementary schools. And we don't have a date yet for that, but she's continuing to work on that. Um, and as far as the mask, 80% in the high school, as a COVID task force this morning, we met and talked about what we would recommend for that. Um, we are uh, really pleased with our um, COVID case counts right now, and we are continuing to look at attendance measures in the past. And uh, we've always seen spikes after vacations. Um, so we would recommend that we wait till right after the February vacation. Uh, the COVID task force will meet the Thursday that week um, and either March 7th, the following Monday, or even Friday the 4th could be a, a good date um, that we uh, propose. Again, we'll look at positive case counts and attendance as measures. Per DESE, they strongly recommend unvaccinated students continue to wear masks. Um, masks will be required, not recommended on buses, um, indoor sports because of the MIAA. And also DESE has health offices as a requirement as well. 
We would encourage more students. Right now, about 428 high school students are involved with the at-home COVID testing program. And this would be a good opportunity for us while masks are off for us to encourage more to opt in so there would be a weekly surveillance um, for any cases at home. And that's what I have. Questions? Uh, we'll just start virtually if that's all right. Ms. Sure. Picard, any questions? Not at this time. All right, Ms. Petrowski? Uh, no, thank you. Ms. Vitsi? No questions. Thanks. Uh, I, I, could you explain number one again about March 7th? You're saying that at one week after February vacation would be a good time to consider. So, if our, so after February vacation, we'll take a look at attendance and the COVID case counts. And if they're still as low as they are now with yeah. three to five cases at the right. high school, um, we, the COVID task force would absolutely recommend masks being optional. At the high school. At the high Not school, the right. Okay. Right, because the high schools reach the 80%. Correct. I was making sure you weren't saying anything else. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and did, you, did I hear you say that the COVID task force is meeting March 3rd? That's the Thursday. Every Thursday we meet. Every Thursday. Okay. Every All Thursday. Right. So that would be the first meeting after, after the February, February, February break. And then the 7th, which is there, is actually the Monday. Monday after. Starting that. Okay. All right. I just wanted to... Um, and I don't remember, I don't have it in front of me. Do we have school committee on the th March 3rd? We do. We do. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. That was my only question. Okay. Awesome. I'm all set. Perfect. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. Cheryl? Want to diagnose Holly over here? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, and next I'd like to introduce Masi Bakuzi, our director of, uh, executive director of special education, um, to talk about um, a couple of terrific things coming up in special education. Okay. Holly mentioned this last week, I won't let you talk about it again this week. <laughs> um, so as Holly mentioned last, uh, last week, we have Sarah Ward coming for CPAC. We actually also have her coming um, for our March and April PD days. Um, March for the high school in April for the, I'm sorry, March for the uh, middle school and high school and April for elementary school teachers on our two hour PE day. Special, for all special ed staff and some others if they want to attend as well, like, you know. Um, and to give the same sort of uh, presentation around executive functioning skills, what they are, how they develop, strategies around them, strategies for families, strategies for classrooms. Um, I've seen a couple of posts. She's been in the area and done some other CPAC. The last I spoke to um, Courtney, she was ca calling her to make sure because they've already had a really great response and a lot of RSV RSVPs to that, So, which is great, which is what we like to see. So she was checking in with her to make sure we didn't have a cap on, a, on how many people could attend. Um, so we're looking forward to that. And finally, after I think months and months of trying, we did collaborate on a date for Andover, North Andover Special Olympics. It's been a couple of years. Awesome. Uh, it's not something that I have organized before, so it's my first uh, go around in it, but I don't know who she is yet. I haven't met her yet, but there's this wonderful person named Kara who's been, um, Kathy Keith used to do a lot of the organization, so we kind of had an on-the-spot person, but this Kara from Andover has been just a fantastic resource. So. Things are in place. The date is June 9th. It was literally the only date between April and um, like the last day of school that there was no conflict. Unfortunately, there does have to be a rain date, which will, I think um, she was checking um, with uh, Principal Jackson, but it looks like it's gonna be June 10th, which unfortunately, if that's the case, there will be some schools because of MCAS that won't be able to attend. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that was we, we went back and forth quite a bit on a date. So ordering T-shirts, um, there's volunteers. In the past, uh, Kitchers has used it as a community service project. So um, Best Buddies has been contacted. So yeah, be, we are, it's our year to host. Yep. Awesome. Yep. So that's all in place and like looking forward to some normalcy. Yay. Yeah. That's awesome. Great day. Can we be included on um, signups for help? Yeah. And yep. I, I, this is Kara, who I already am going to give an award to who, when, when we meet, because <laughs> I still told, I said, please, like, as explicit as possible. So um, I will ask her when those signups happen. Awesome. It's very, I've volunteered before. It's super fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a tremendous event. Um, 
I'm sure this year will be awesome. It'll be great to have the kids back. Um, you know, it's, we just did merge with Andover just a few years back, and um, it's my favorite day of the year. Yeah. <laughs> I just love it, and it's, it's an amazing event. The volunteers are unbelievable, and uh, the parent turnout um, is awesome, and the students have a blast. So uh, I can't wait for it, and hopefully it doesn't rain. I couldn't contain my excitement at the Sergeant Fun Run, so I'm sure it'll be an exciting day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Okay. And that's it for the superintendent's report. Uh, any, any weather updates, Dr. Gillingham, that you're uh, uh, <laughs> okay. putting you on your spot? So. Um, yeah, so I haven't had, you know, we're obviously in the meeting, um, and um, I've been waiting for an update from the DPW. Um, really critical. I, I, you know, I, I sometimes joke, you know, I never went to school to be a meteorologist, but safety is the most important part of what we do. Um, and so uh, I've been waiting for a, a little bit after 7, update from the DPW. And as soon as this report is over, I will post it on Twitter and, and send it out. Uh, school will be canceled in the North End of Public Schools tomorrow. Um, unfortunately, the ice, um, freezing and rain from 4 to 7 a.m., um, you know, DPW is pretty confident we can get in early. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the road conditions after um, are not uh, suitable to, for safety. So um, it is not posted anywhere yet. This is the first anyone has heard it live. And I think this is the first time we've ever been at a school committee meeting. Um, where yeah. I just got the report from uh, John Lavin from the DPW. Um, it's something we take serious. And, um, you know, I, I think folks, you know, I sent out something about snow procedures earlier a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure if people read it. Maybe it was even December. Um, and, you know, if we can call school the night before, we'd love to do that so people can prepare. We can't always do that, even though that seems to be the trend as of late. Um, and so that's good news. And I, Wish the students were here when the report came. Uh, yeah. When the students. <laughs> I hope they're still listening. Yeah, I'm sure they are. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, they, they have dialed in. Uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but it sounded like you were ready for that. There's no. Uh... Well, I, you know, it has been a, a very tricky forecast. Um, you know, and I do consult with other lo local folks, but I'm worried about the safety here in North Andover. And the report literally just came in uh, to make that decision a few minutes ago. So. Well, good timing. Uh, and just to be clear, a traditional snow day, there is no this assignment. There's no snow day with no remote learning expectations for students and staff. And um, we will also tomorrow have a superintendent's uh, snow challenge. Or I think this would be probably an ice challenge. Ice challenge. Uh, if anyone wants to participate. Um, so uh, I'll get that on Twitter now and it will go out in a few minutes. Okay. Right. Awesome. Uh, all right, so we will, uh, I'm going to go into the chair's report ver very quickly, not a ton to hit on here because we've got other uh, things that really are kind of uh, out there as well. Uh, one, again, I think the students kind of said it pretty well, but, you know, the end of the first semester uh, at the high school and, you know, I think for anybody who understands kind of what happened in the past couple of years uh, for the faculty and the staff to kind of change what they were doing uh, from a teaching perspective, uh, to then go in and, and be used to that trimester schedule and migrate over to coming back into class uh, and, and having that semester. Uh, well done uh, to all of them. And uh, I really want to thank the teachers uh, for pivoting on that. Uh, I know that they were excited and ready to do it, um, but um, being excited about it doesn't diminish the amount of work and, in, and preparation that it takes to change from a trimester to a uh, semester schedule. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, excited, very excited, uh, as I think everyone is, uh, for Mamma Mia to be back. Um, I, uh, I hope to make one of the shows there. And then I think our, bef between now and our next meeting, we will have at least a couple of contingencies of students who will leave on uh, exchange uh, trips. I know the Spain trip is going, and I, I think the German is going, or is that later? They're in April. They're April, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, and so I, I know that there have been questions about whether or not uh, students were still going to do them, uh, and they are still uh, uh, proceeding with that. Uh, obviously, some guidelines in place with that, but uh, extremely excited to kind of move forward. So. All right, we will move over to you, Dr. Mealy. We had the town manager last week, or last week. Yeah. So we did meet uh, as a group, the facilities master plan two group, working group, and 
we um, are finalizing the final report from MVG around facilities master plan and creating an executive summary that people can read and it will have the links to more information if you want more detailed information similar to what we did with our final report. Um, so that'll be available shortly. And I just want to draw your attention. We're also uh, working on and um, soliciting um, bids from consultants to help us with the education uh, for the community. But I think most people are familiar. This, this is actually two links on the agenda. There's the school capacity subcommittee web page that many people are fami familiar with. If you're not, here it is. And it has uh, the things that we've talked about. It has the um, town manager's facilities master plan two, uh, building on success presentation she did last week. Uh, it also has um, all the work that the subcommittee did, including the forum presentations, the final report, and um, everything associated with that, the needs assessments, the enrollment data, all of that. I think people are familiar with that. Uh, I want to draw your attention to what has just gone up uh, regarding specific to facilities master plan two. And here you can click on a project and, and see what is being proposed visually. You can see um, the final report will be available here. It gives you a summary right now, but that will be um, available the same, the capital improvement plan that the town manager has given to the tri-board um, committee or meeting is there. Uh, and uh, the public forums that we've done regarding this, our final report, the subcommittee's final report is all there and we'll continue to add to that as well. So I just wanted to draw people's attention to the resources that are available. Any questions? Uh, looks like Ms. Picard is saying no. Ms. Petrowski? No, thank you. Ms. Vitsi? Ms. Mabley? Uh, so obviously very exciting. Uh, I know that there's more kind of work coming out. I think one of the things that I have heard from people in the community, and I'm wondering if you can speak to, is you know, there are some renditions of school buildings that are there. Um, when do they start to actually architecturally look at that? I mean, like, people kind of look at that and they're very concerned, you know, like, you know, whoa, like, you know, courtyard of the middle school, right? I, we hear that all the time. Like, mm -hmm. is that a locked in stone type of thing? Could you just talk a little bit about kind of where that goes? For, yeah, in, in and you're process? right. That, that one is the one that most people have questions about. Uh, we've been dealing with that, as, as Holly can attest, um, quite frequently and basically you're right it, it's an initial assessment by those who have experience who look and say well based on just looking at this kind of back of the napkin type analysis it looks like the courtyard would be your your best bet but once we hire a design firm they come in and they do a facility assessment and decide what is the best at that point. And it's gonna be also based on input from staff in the community uh, to determine what is at the actual best design for that particular project. And that happens to all the projects. Okay, so people shouldn't take those as being... I, I will say that you know, they're, they're usually right when they make that initial assessment, but not always. So if there's a compelling reason we should be somewhere else other than the courtyard at the middle school, that will come out during the initial design okay. for that project. All right, great. Actually related to that, would it be useful, or maybe it's already there, to put any kind of disclaimer saying, like, you know, these are not final drawings? It, or, it so does say in that, the, okay. In the, in so you say that, it's one of the last things we added because we, we know how important that is right. for people to know it's in there okay. that say just that. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right. Quick question now, sorry. Um, is there some place that has like what the next steps are? Um, because I, I believe that the next steps are that we vote at town meeting um, to start this plan. Yeah, that's a, it's a really good question and um, reminder to kind of update the timeline. We certainly had one when we were doing the public forums. Right. And it's a good time now to kind of update a timeline having come out of 
the holidays and, and, and working towards town meeting. So good point. Thank you. Um, the facilities master plan meetings that uh, would that be on the calendar? Are they public? Good question. With it being a working group, I would have to ask Suzanne if that's uh, something that's required to be posted. I don't think it is. Okay. Um, but we can certainly also give a schedule of when we're meeting. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Is that separate from the facility master's plan implementation committee? Those are public meetings. Is this part of the facilities master plan implementation committee as well? I'm not sure which is the implementation committee. I think originally we talked about an implementation committee, but uh, it ended up being a working group. There's a, I mean, I, there's an implementation committee that meets on Monday of next week and has been meeting oh. for years, I think. Then that's not something I've been a part of. Okay. <laughs> so maybe this hasn't moved to them yet. I don't right. think so. Okay. All right. Anything else for Dr. Mealy? All right. So um, this, I'm not sure if we're going to have Dr. Mealy or Dr. Gilligan, but uh, I'm wondering how we feel about spending. What What is it, Dr. Gilligan? Fifty five million here? Absolutely. Um, I think that. I think. Uh, uh, sorry. This is a. Um, Tremendous um, recommended budget, FY23 budget of $57,217,200, which represents a 5.34% increase. Um, it I, also represents one of the biggest increases we've had in years. Um, I'm appreciative of the work we do um, collaboratively with the town manager and working on this and working with you. Um, and the ability to add uh, this many positions um, to support our students and staff um, next year um, and years to come, um, I think is uh, truly special and a milestone uh, and something to celebrate that you know um, we haven't been able to do uh, in many lean years. So um, yes, that would be the increase, uh, and it's very exciting. All right. Uh, so I would take a motion uh, regarding the superintendent's proposed budget for fiscal year. 23. I'll make a motion to approve the superintendent's proposed fiscal year 23 budget as presented in the gigantic binder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, motion made by Ms. Mabley, seconded by uh, Ms. Vitsky. All right, discussion. Uh, we'll start with you uh, virtually, Ms. Picard. Nothing to add at this time. Nothing to add? Ms. Petrowski? Nothing to add, no. Ms. Vitsky? Oh to say that I remember this time last year um, there were you know we were all a little bit dis disappointed with the increase of the budget and some of us didn't you know some members didn't vote for it for that reason um, and the town manager really asked us to take a leap of faith and say trust me um, I know I can't do, do it this year but we will get you what you want and I just want to give her credit because she was true to her word and um, this is great that we have such a large increase this year for the budget. Mrs. Mabley. I would totally echo what Ms. Vitsky said. And um, as my last budget doing all this, um, I, you know, we, Dr. Gillen has talked about it. It's gone in all kinds of tiny directions. We, you know, jumping up and down, excited about adding 1.2 teachers in places. Um, this is what we've been working toward. And uh, I'm really thrilled and I'm excited to be able to vote in a moment to say yes. All right. Uh, again, thrilled. Um, you know, I, I think last year uh, there was so much anxiety about the unfinished learning uh, that, that was out there. And uh, I think we put a lot of faith and a lot of trust in uh, Ms. Marks, you know, to kind of help lead that uh, and, you know, make sure we had the right people and staff in order to kind of help do that. And to see this work, I think, continue, I think is, is honestly a testament, I think, to, to, to the hard work and the dedication that you've done because uh, we're continuing this forward uh, with your leadership and, and some of the curriculum and coaching and uh, collaboration that we have with our... Uh, uh, and I was going to say, you have a superb team of coaches and... There, there are, 
I should say teams. You know, I have my team, I have our central office team, I work with Marcy. Um, can you please use a microphone? Yeah. Fortunate to have a SPED director that I can collaborate with um, so closely. As I, if you missed it, my, my team of people are absolutely superb, our central office team. And out and about with the teachers. We are, we are very blessed in this district. We have a lot of excellent, excellent teachers who are very dedicated to their students and to um, the progress that they, they want to see the students make. So we are, um, as I've said before, I've been in other places. I'm not a lifer in North Andover, so I've experienced other places. I've loved every place I've been, but this is special. There are really, really good people here, so kudos to all of them. And, and I was actually going to say uh, to Mrs. Uh, Bacuzzi as well, I mean, I think the, the team that you have with uh, supporting our students with the social and emotional uh, and the guidance and, you know, e even some of the liaisons that are reaching out to parents and all that, uh, I think has made a really big difference for that. So uh, I think it's really exciting that not only did we have this this past year, but we are continuing to do this as we continue to work with our students, faculty and staff uh, for that. So thank you very much uh, for for all of your hard work. And um, Dr. Uh, Mealy and Gilligan, you guys don't get any credit. It's all them tonight, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, if there's no other discussion, I will uh, call for a, a roll call vote regarding the superintendent's recommended budget for $57,217,200. Ms. Picard, what say you? Yes. Ms. Petrowski? Yes. Ms. Vitsky? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So 5-0, we have a budget for you, Dr. Mealy, pending town meeting. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, and uh, this is very exciting, so. Awesome. Can I just add a funny? Um, Holly took almost by word what I was going to say last week, but uh, there were enough accolades going out that it felt like I would have been piling on. Um, but it was, it's really encouraging, and, and Dr. Gilligan can attest to this, um, that they did ask us to take a leap of faith last year, um, and then, but this year showed that they are com as committed as we are to this long-term plan. Very encouraging. Yeah, very true. All right. All right. Mr. McDevitt, can you review for us um, where this goes from here? Are, are some folks going to go to the... FinCom and make a presentation and all that jazz? Yep, sorry, let me just get the right tab here. So in the binder, uh, fiscal year 23 budget calendar. So about the second to the last, if you're following along at home. Uh, sorry, Ms. Petrowski. Uh, so we uh, had our public hearing on the 27th. We voted uh, today uh, to approve the budget. Um, it then goes in somewhat short order um, over to the select board, I believe next Monday uh, for their uh, review. It goes to uh, FinCom basically the next day. The select board votes on it at the end of February on the 28th, uh, which gives them roughly a month, uh, actually exactly a month, uh, to put it into the warrant for the town meeting and then uh, there are some FinCom public hearings at the end of March, and town meeting is on the 17th of May. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah, I just think it's helpful because there's so many pages for people to be looking at, and sometimes people feel like, do we have to do something right now? Like, what do we need to do next? And um, I just think it's helpful for the public to hear that, so I appreciate you. Yeah, so, so our vote of approval now um, basically kind of helps roll this up to the select board and then uh, goes to FinCom and then uh, the residents on the 17th of May. And specific to the question about finance committee and presenting to finance committee, uh, we've had discussions with the town manager. We will be presenting together to finance committee uh, this year. And because there are three new members of finance committee, I will be doing a, a presentation I've done in the past which kind of outlines and educates people on how the school department budget works. So that'll be part of that as well. Awesome. Uh, was the, uh, uh, I, th I think it was the 8th, if I remember correctly. Uh, going off of memory there, but I think it was the February 8th. Next Tuesday? Recommended operating budget forwarded to 
FinCom on the 8th, and then they vote. Looks like FinCom has their public hearing on the 29th and also votes on the 29th of March. So based on that wording, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee. It could be the same. Um, it's being sent to them yeah. then, but I'm sure that's because it's following the presentation to the select board. Right. Um, so it's sometime in between those so two So it's somewhere dates. in there. I, I didn't think it was necessarily During February, okay. yes. Thank so you. The select board votes it in and then the FinCom has final say? I'm still learning. It, it's Town meeting has final Town say. Meeting has Town final meeting say. has final say. Right. FinCom kind of goes through and makes sure and assesses that it is financially responsible um, from there. So it's kind of uh, a check, if you will, on mm -hmm. the select board. Okay. Is that a good way to? That's a, it's a yes. very good yeah. way of saying it. Very, very yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Dr. Gilligan gives it to us. We have the review. We present it to the select board. They then review us in conjunction with everything else, police, fire, et cetera, um, DPW, uh, which we'll need tomorrow. And then it goes to FinCom and then. And what happens if they reject it? Or? We have a lot of work to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do they support it or don't support it and stuff like okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right, Dr. Mealy, uh, updated budget report. Yeah, I, I can certainly feel questions. At this point in the year, we're, we're right smack in the middle. It's not surprising that um, unless something earth-shattering happens and there's you know, a major change, um, the, then the, the, the projections aren't really impacted, and, and that's the case. We're, we're cruising right along, although, as we've said before, our expenses are certainly higher than normal in order to um, make the adjustments and, and have the mitigation um, factors in place, but this hasn't, the projection has not changed since the last budget status report. We still anticipate using about $600,000 of the um, ESSER three funding uh, in order to uh, get through this year, leaving us with the amount we'd expect for next year to um, continue with the recovery services positions through next year. All right, so questions for Dr. Mealy. Ms. Picard? None at this time. Ms. Petrowski? Uh, not right now. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Vitsky? No questions. Ms. Mabley? No questions. Thank you. Ms. All right. I have, uh, I have one right now, which uh, may be a combo for you and Mrs. Bacuzzi, um, but special education, uh, I guess specific probably to out of district placement is always something that, um, you know, is, is quite an unknown uh, based on, you know, how, how students are doing. Um, you know, heat is certainly more... Um, predictable. Um, I don't know if I specifically see that in here or if it's within each of the schools. So they, yeah, n the 9100, Where is it? yeah, the, at near the end are the out of districts. Oh, you know what? I, I didn't see the color change. I thought that was still part of the middle school. Okay, sorry. So you're, you're right, in past years we've had, um, and it's the reason we have a special education stabilization fund, is we've had some major uh, occurrences, surprises during the year that we've had to adjust to. Um, since adding in the stabilization fund, uh, Marcy and myself um, and our staff meet regularly to review the out-of-district placements, to project what might be coming up, what's dropping off um, so it's really given us a good handle on that and it's in this year in particular has been pretty steady uh, but we do review that um, on a regular basis all right so the one item that jumps out to me as certainly being higher is just tutoring and salary uh, for staff is that starting to cause uh, alarm regarding uh, stabilization fund or no, that one is more um, related to summer activity, and okay. it, we did not budget what we ended up doing, and it's um, grant funding that ends up covering a lot of that. We just haven't done the journal entries for those yet. Okay. All right. Okay. I always think it's helpful when we talk about grants, um, Dr. Mealy, 
um, to, to help people understand that um, a lot of that is entitlement grants that are renewed annually from the, from the federal government um, through the state. Um, I think a lot of times when people hear that we're paying for things with grants, they're like, you know, they're thinking nonprofit world where grants come and go and change all the time. Our grants are much more stable than that. Yeah, it's actually part of that presentation that I've done to um, finance committee. So I can certainly provide that to the school committee as well uh, when I've completed it, updated it, and, and had it ready for them. Um, that does, and maybe as you know, as part of the next budget status report, I can include that and just run through it fairly quickly. But if you have any questions you want to highlight, we could certainly do that. Thank you. All right. Okay, so second reading and vote on the mask face covering policy EBCFA. So we do have attorney Egan with us. Uh, I was just, we do have our what is actually throwing me in the packet right now, and I don't know if this is my packet or not. But I, I see the one for new business. I do not see the second reading. I have it from last week, but um, I'm not sure if it's just not in my packet or I have it out of order. It's the last two pages. That, the last policy ECBFA. But, yeah, but that's actually the one specific that uh, oh, the for the high school, yeah. sorry. Well, why don't we let Attorney Egan explain Okay, it? all right. Because I think there's one version. It, it is, yeah, sort of. I can't explain. I'm not quite sure what you have in your packet, um, but if you, if um, if that's you, Jim, if you can scroll down all the way, then we can see if we have. We're all talking about the same packet or same policy. There we go. Yep, it's the that same is one. the same one. Yep. Um, so what we did is after last meeting's conversation about the mask policy. There was a discussion about whether or not we needed to have a one mask policy and then a separate one for the high school to deal with um, the circumstances when DESE uh, certifies the attestation and allows um, the, the exemption from the state from the DESE mask mandate. And in that conversation, we sort of thought, I worked with um, Amy Mabley um, with this and also the chair, and we thought that it would make more sense to put that um, sort of process in one policy. And so what we did is we added two paragraphs to our existing policy, and one is the underlined one, and that is, it's new, but it, it, it's basically the same um, paragraph, but it's just worded a little bit differently that says, as we said before, the face covering requirement remains in effect until the school committee determines otherwise. However, upon receipt's attestation that a school building has reached 80% rate, the school committee will consult with North Andover COVID Task Force and the Board of Health to determine if a school building will be exempt from the North Andover face covering requirement. And that was in the same language that we had last week, but a little bit different. And then the next paragraph is really where we um, deal with the issue of when, such as the high school, now that DESE has said that you, we've um, you submitted the attestation that 80 per, over 80% vaccination rate and that that school will no longer be subject to the DESE mandate. And what we did is we provided three options. The first option is what DESE states and what they recommend, which is vaccinated students and staff will not be subject to the face covering requirement and it is highly recommended that unvaccinated students and staff continue to wear face coverings. That's the DESE um, recommended language. And I believe that was also the language that we just heard from um, uh, Ms. Barzak. And then there's another, then there's two other options that the school committee can consider. And that is the second one is vaccinated students are no longer subject to the committee's face covering policy. Unvaccinated students and staff will remain subject to the face covering policy. So that's sort of a two, you know, two different requirements for people within the school. And then the third one is just students and staff will no longer be subject to the committee's face covering requirement. That doesn't deal with vaccinated versus unvaccinated. 
So th those are really the three options um, that the school committee is faced with. And um, so we, we presented it in one policy so that it can be more concrete. And then if another school building meets the attestation and if we need to, if you, you would like to change the policy, then you can come back to this policy and make some adjustments to it. So that's, that's up for the committee's um, consideration at this point. Okay, so I'm just curious here on this new paragraph which is in red. Do we have to specify the school? Well, so what we're so if you read the um, underlying paragraph, yep. the paragraph prior to that, that it, this is says it says specifically upon receipt of Desi's attestation that the school building has reached 80% vaccination rate, the school committee will consult with the North Andover, blah, 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 and then whether the, or whether a school building will be exempt. So you, you don't, you could in your policy at this point, you could say that, uh, that DESE has determined or that you've submitted the attestation for the high school and that DESE has accepted that. And therefore this particular determination is solely for the high school building if you would choose to do that, if you'd like to do that to make it as clear as it can be yeah so i think the intent here was to have one mask policy um, that would be um, all-encompassing uh, but the removal uh, or going to the policy um, to a you know go to mask optional would be a separate vote of the school committee um, you know if a school reached the 80 percent or the the rules change Ms. The idea is to outline here the policy and then talk about should you implement it to lift the mask mandate from a particular building if, if we make that when we get to do that in consultation with the medical people and if we do that we have to pick one of these three things that we're saying but if we keep lining up all the the buildings each time then that's the implementation of the policy it seems like you're rewriting it every single time I would, no, I was just thinking, my question might be a little different. Um, I was thinking if that red part needs, like, after the words, no longer in effect, insert in a building that has reached 80% vaccination. Or has, has gotten an approved attestation yes, or something like that. Approved attestation, right. right. Okay. I didn't know if we needed that to be clear, because if somebody okay. just reads the second page and says, oh, there's, it's mass right. optional anywhere. Okay. Well, if that, and if that takes care of the idea is we don't want to have to come back with but each then, building. But then, based on what Cheryl said tonight, if... It's mask optional everywhere. She didn't say that. Mar I'm just saying if, okay. if in March oh, okay. they recommend that it's mask optional, then that makes this obsolete again. Okay. Right. Well, that's why I clarify so, specifically yeah. with her because I, I thought at yeah. first she was saying the whole district and she was saying a building that that's reaches right. 80%. You're right. You're and right. I would just You're say right. that, with the, about that part. They, yeah. you know, the commissioner on the mask law extended the mask mandate to February 28th. Mm -hmm. And then um, they put in a, a new caveat about if you hit the 80 percent and the school committee decides to um, make that change to go mask optional um, they strongly recommend it unvaccinated and that did, that was a change mm -hmm. that. that's mm -hmm. number that so that right. their language is number one yep. so super fast before we go too far because we're already like the boat sailed here um is there a motion regarding this because we're getting into the discussion so i don't know which one we're voting on now are we voting on well, the, the second reading or the first reading then because so i i thought we were and, and that's why I asked what was in the yeah. packet. I thought we were voting on the policy without this stuff mm -hmm. in it as the second reading and that the first reading was this policy with this information in it okay. as an updated. Recommendation is the recommendation is we have a policy and this has in it, should we come to a discussion about, which we're going to in a few minutes, and potentially about a building, it's already taken care of. So it's, we're not voting on a building here. We're just voting on when someday we discuss whether or not we're going to lift the mass money because we got the attestation, the policy's already all set. But so we have to choose one of these gotcha. three options. So I, I would make a motion to accept this policy as it is, but with option number one saying vaccinated students and staff will not be subjected to the face covering requirement, and it's highly recommended that unvaccinated students and staff continue to wear face coverings. 
That would be the one. So I would make the motion. I am making that motion. Okay. So motion made by Ms. Mabley, seconded by Ms. Petrowski. Okay. So we are going to have discussion now. We are only voting on the we are only discussing and voting on the policy, Correct. not whether or not we are rem removing masks Correct. at a school. Correct. Mm -hmm. but I don't, I, I'm having a hard time seeing the distinction between this policy that we don't have now, like the first reading masking. Oh, I see. The first reading. What are we reading for that? Well, that <laughs> that's not, what okay, I thought so was this. Yeah, so this is incorrect. The agenda is incorrect, not... Not the first part, not the second reading. We're not on that yet, so let's not talk about that yet. We're on this. But, but it says, first, right? Well, but, it, but, but Holly's right, because I thought we were adopting the policy without this, and that that right. policy was going to be an updated policy, which would then supersede this. That was my... Okay. That was not my understanding. I, I, I understood that we were having a policy... And then we're trying to make sure the policy covers whatever discussions we have either today or down the road for any building. We don't have to rewrite the policy. The policy exists. And then we talk about how we're going to implement it. So what, I agree. The agenda saying a first reading, there's nothing to read. Right. That is a problem, I guess. Which is what had happened last week, too. Right. <laughs> I, okay. I can ask Suzanne. So, so I think I understand... The, the questions, but I'm not I'm not positive I do. But it sounds like this. So it, it sounds like there's two things, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but there, there, you have two agenda items. One is a first reading of a policy, and then you have another agenda item that's a second reading of a policy. Correct. And so this policy that's before you right now, this is the policy that would be the second reading. So you've looked at this policy a number of times. You had it on the agenda as a first reading last meeting. It was amended, which we do with a number of the policies. You look at them at the first time and the second time, if there's changes to be made, they're presented back to the school committee and you look at them as a second reading and then can vote on them. And take a vote if you choose or, or make additional amendments. So this policy is the second reading of the mask policy. And then last meeting, there was an agenda item that stated face mask policy high school first reading. But it, that was the problem there was there was no policy. Correct. Written policy. There was a discussion. And so we have an, an agenda item, you, the, your agenda item that talks about a high school face mask policy first reading. There still is no policy written for that because what we what we are suggesting or uh, is being presented to the school committee is that that face mask, high school face mask policy just be incorporated into the second reading of your face mask policy EBCFA. Does that make sense? You had me until like the last second. <laughs> <laughs> So it's never going right. to be a first or second reading of this of, of this policy. I, I, of, the, I, of the high school yeah. face mask policy, there will right. never be. A, right. There is no. The, right. One hasn't been presented, and one has not been written. So on our meeting on the seventeenth, it would be a, a vote of whether or not we are rem modifying the mask policy after consultation. So exactly. So you would have your policy. So if this is adopted tonight, then your next meeting, you would have, you'd follow your policy. So you have the DESI um, decision. You would consult with the COVID task force and with the board of health, and then you'd make your determination. And once you made your determination, you would say, oh, and our policy says now we determine that once we, um, once we determine that face coverings are no longer required, then either one, two, or three, whichever you adopt into your policy tonight. Okay. I know Ms. Picard has a question, but I'm just going to try to get clarification then. So if we were to vote on this tonight, we're fine. We're, we're going into, into effect. Then if we decide we are going to vote after consultation with the COVID task force and Board of Health, do we need a first and second reading of that? You, you wouldn't be adopting 
a new policy. It's not a policy. You'd just be making a determination. We're just making a determination. Okay. All right. So that may be where there was confusion. Okay. All right. So that, after that determination, does anything need to be done? Because this says if, if we determined. So let's say we determine. Do we need? The school committee has determined right. the face cover requirement is no longer in effect. Then we have to choose one of the then. Right. But right. then, do we need to have something in we, writing? We would have to have we've a, decided. And, We've determined it. Well, well you have the policy and you'd just be voting to exempt the high school. The high school. From the policy. Or or yeah. another school. And, and right, and you have your vote. Percent. Your vote is and you yeah. have a certain degree of the vote. The school anything committee in this evening voted, voted right. to do this. Yeah, that's why the change okay. from last week. Last week it said masking policy at NAHS and this was you know, the masking at NAHS. Right. Okay. All right. Sorry. I apologize, Mr. Card. I know you've been waiting patiently. I I'm not really sure where to quite jump in um, <laughs> right um, it's it seems to me that when we come back to talk about the high school or when we get to the next discussion item to talk about the high school um, we would be exempting a building the high school is the one that we're talking about right now only from a portion of this um, we wouldn't be exempting them from all other aspects of the mask policy because, for example, visitors, guests, and others still have to wear a face covering when they come to the building. And we are still going to follow the MIAA um, rules. Correct. So, so it seems to me that when we do take that other vote, it will be only mm -hmm. on you know, a section of this policy. So it might be helpful to label the section of the policy um, or all the sections of the policy or paragraphs. And it seems to me the part that we would be exempting a building from is what is currently in red and that is currently before us as the number one of three options. Right, so the policy itself as you're as you're saying is in red it says if the school committee determines that the face covering requirement is no longer in effect it doesn't say that this face covering policy no longer applies to a school building so you're correct that it's only saying for one particular school building and only one part of the policy yeah yeah, yeah. just the face covering requirement exactly in, in well, the, but the face in the covering building. requirement like during the academic day we're not going to start going against MI 2A, okay. right? right? We're not going to start having visitors and guests not required to wear a face mask because they're not part of that, you know, that 80% that herd immunity or, or whatever we want to, you, you know, call it. So we would only be exempting the building from what's in red number one right now. Right. Yeah, I, I, did you have a question, Ms. Vizzi? No, I don't follow, because if you look at the very second paragraph, it's exempting that, too, saying that everybody has to wear a mask. I don't, I guess I don't understand the, her, the second, Well, so Holly, second if, policy. if we I understand that it's, it's exempting the face mask covering policy, but that's sprinkled throughout this whole policy. This is the face mask policy. Right. So if we exempt the high school from the face mask policy, that's this entire policy, and then we lose the authority to say that visitors and guests must wear face covering, that we're going to follow the MI2A you know, requirements for sports. Yeah, but, but the policy says visitors and right. guests and others must still wear right. a face covering. But if you exempt the high school from it, no, how does that... motioned, <laughs> moved, um, just the vaccinated students and staff. It's only students and staff. Right. It doesn't say, like, it's a I, free I hear you. you see yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Including during MIAA events? Yeah, if you read later yeah, on, it, it calls it out. That's further down. Students, faculty, okay. and staff engaged in athletic activities are required. And then we've said it in two different places. Right below there, visitors, guests, and others must wear a face covering. 
And at the second to last line, visitors, guests, and invitees, regardless of vaccination status, are required to wear a face covering. Right. I, I, I don't disagree. It's, it, it, it's, it's confusing, but um, as would be constantly writing up drafts, too. <laughs> right. And again, we're not moving to remove masks at any school. Right. We're only updating the policy Correct. so that we have the ability to move quickly in a meeting to unmask students as they hit the 80% or whatever it is. Okay. But I, I don't, I, I, I would actually, in my motion, I should have included, I liked what Ms. Vitsky had said about um, after, you know, receiving an approved attestation form and in consultation and after consultation, blah, 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 the school committee, like adding the bit about, um, yeah, con after receiving the, con what's it called? The approved attestation form. I don't know if we can type it in right now. I wish we could just type it in right now. And I might also add in that same language that's highlighted right now, the same sentence, just add the words notwithstanding the above, comma, just to show like they still have to comply with MIA no matter what we vote. Right. Does Is that, that satisfy, that Helen, your, your concern about that? Okay, and then just a question. So, second page, basically, um, Jim, could you go up? I think one paragraph, if you don't mind, please. That's it. Uh, nope, down. There we go. The school committee delegates the authority of the superintendent in consultation with the COVID task force to reinstate the universal mask mandate should a public health concern arise either in a particular school or broadly in the North End of our community. The universal, uh, the universal mask mandate in schools will remain in place and be reviewed at the next re regularly scheduled school community. So the only question that I have is, let's just say hypothetically, the next update on the mask policy will be the 28th of February, right? And if Desi comes out and says all masks can be removed, we would have to wait in theory until our next meeting, which is March 3rd. I thought we were saying that we're saying the superintendent Super 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 has the authority, de delegate the authority to reinstate, right. reinstate or remove, or, or not remove, that's probably the word. If, yeah, to take rescind. action <laughs> to, to to reinstate or rescind i like that that that's just my thought right that's what you're saying Be, because if something changes really quick i do not want these and right I, I don't want these students to say but now we've got to wait four days for a school committee meeting like that to me yeah. makes yeah and i think the purpose of it was you know the school committee is voting on whether they're going to exempt a school who hits that mark this just gives the ability if there was ever an uptick once the masks were off, Correct. I could, right. with consultation with Brian LeGrass and Cheryl right. and the task force, say we're going to put them back on for a certain amount of time. Yep. So, actually, I just realized all the stuff I said that you had said, Holly. It, it, the previous paragraph that was underlined up at the top, this face covering requirement shall remain in effect until the school committee determines otherwise. However, upon receipt of Desi's attestation that the school building has reached its 80% vaccination rate, the school committee will consult. So we've kind of already said that yeah my concern was this is the start of a new page yeah if somebody looks at this and says mm. oh okay. the school committee it's no longer in effect because that if is small right and some people will say after cons consultation the school committee has yeah, determined under no, let's make it no question at right. all repeat repeat all right so you'd say after consultation so what would you say because i want to write it right now after so the word effect Yep. I would say in a building that has received the attestation from the DESI attestation, mm -hmm. whatever. Attestation. Okay. In a school building. Yeah. Has. Technically, we provided the attestation and they approved it. That's why I wrote That's what she's um, yeah. approved. approved. I've written approved. Yep. Received and approved attestation. Everybody hates that word, right? Attestation <laughs> from, okay. So
So, so if you missed it once, <laughs> there it is again. You All got right. it again. So right. I can read over the two because you made it in the next paragraph. So here are the comment, the changes I have. If I can amend my motion, I'm motioning to have. After consultation, if the school committee has determined that the face covering requirement is no longer in effect in a school building that has received an approved attestation form from DESE, vaccinated students and staff will not be subject to the face covering requirement and it is highly recommended that unvaccinated students and staff continue to wear face coverings. And then mm -hmm. visitors and guests must also, and others must still wear a face covering. The school committee delegates the authority of the superintendent in consultation with the COVID task force to reinstate or rescind the universal mask mandate should a public health concern or should public health conditions change? I don't know, because right. you wouldn't rescind if right. there's a concern. Right. Right. Rescinding, it would give right. maybe the ability to reinstate. I know she, she's right. suggesting that you also get the ability right. to, to rescind. To rescind. If, right. if Desi, the, right, Desi comes out on the 28th, public health, you don't have the ability I to rescind it bother to put the the clause about should a public health blah 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 i think it would be fine to say in consultation with the COVID task force uh to reinstate or rescind the universal mask mandate period period yeah. i love it That's or fine. either i like the either in a particular school or broadly though yeah yes. okay yep mandate. That's fine. okay all right so that's excellent um in consultation with the COVID task force to reinstate or rescind the universal mask mandate at a particular wait either in a particular yep. school or broadly in the north Andover. either in okay cut off too much either mm -hmm. i see either in a particular school or broadly blah 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 okay great because i do not want to drop this as like the universal times. mask mandate in schools <laughs> will remain in place well there may not be a mandate if he rescinds it so that right that's what i was yeah um so the, the decision will be reviewed any or such yeah, yeah. Any such yes decision. Yeah. i like that any such decision so any such decision will be reviewed is we'll, what you're we'll, remain, we'll in remain in place, in place. okay any such decision Will remain in place and be reviewed at the next regularly school six regularly scheduled school committee meeting. Great. Okay. Okay, that's my motion. <laughs> that's your motion. <laughs> that all those changes are made. Did and that's you, my did you still motion. second it? <laughs> okay. All right. Do I have to rescind the old motion, Helen? Is that what you're going to say? I don't. I don't think so. No. But what I was going to say is, I would say the next scheduled school committee meeting, and drop the word regularly. Yeah. Because. If for some reason there was an scheduled. egregious situation, yep. okay, yep. Yeah. good. The next scheduled school committee meeting, great. Is it necessary to add? Um, <laughs> the school committee delegates the authority to the superintendent, um, consistent with this policy, and in consultation with the COVID task force. Is it necessary to have that in there? So that you just add consistent with this policy. That it has to comply with this policy. Okay. Because otherwise, without it in there, like, as Holly has suggested, you know, people can interpret that superintendent has a right to. Yeah. Right. right. Consistent with this policy and in consultation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. If you're adding words, can I just add one thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where it says in either in either in a particular school or broadly in the North Andover school community, it should say not in the North Andover oh, community. Yeah, that's kind of important. Yeah, we can't decide. Given the power to the council, he only has the authority in, in the yeah. school. <laughs> right. Okay, that's so good. So in a nutshell, the school committee votes to exempt the school from the uh, the, the policy. <laughs> you need to, you know, go mask option. Right. And there was a public health so issue. I have the ability to. Yeah. until the next meeting until right. the next meeting my understanding of that statement was that it was in clarification of a public health concern that could arise either in one of the north Andover public schools or in the community in general not if you're allowing him to rescind 
then it, that wouldn't be based on public health concern. That would be a, a change in the DESE policy mandate. So then in the North Andover school community, it doesn't make any sense either. But you're, so the, the way this, the way the sentence reads now is to reinstate or rescind the universal mask mandate, either in a particular school or more broadly in the North Andover community. You took out the language should a public health concern. Okay. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. You want to wait till next week? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just kidding. I, I should have, like, uh, a live no, I, I, I mean, I think we've yeah. got it. And and uh, I, I've gotten I've got very nasty looking, but clear notes. I know what it says. OK. Um, I feel like there's still a discussion that I'd like to have, Mr. McDowell. Sure. Um, so I just feel like saying this out loud is, is helpful to me and perhaps helpful to others in, in our community. Um, I know Ms. Mabley moved that we use number one. For me, number two feels impossible to enforce. Um, and number three, um, I just don't, I don't feel like that's following what our public health officials are saying. So that's why I'm in favor of number one rather than two or three. Okay. <laughs> And that's exactly why I picked them as well. It picked it as well. Okay. Other discussion, debate. I just I, at the risk of <laughs> making Amy go crazy. No, it's good. I just still wonder if in that MIA one, a, two things. A should we move it up to the same line as visitors, guests, and others must still. Um, and B should we put are still required to comply. Just so there's no. Confusion. We all know that they are, but I, I think I'm fine with uh, adding the R still and. Well, still, yeah, imply the change. Well, there is a change because now we're saying this school is ex if we vote that a school is exempt, it's exempt from this policy. With except, the exception, ex with the exception, with the exception of, of wearing a mask on a bus, with the exception of wearing a mask in a health office, with the exception of um, an athletic event. Right. Oh, but we don't have that in here. But I, I don't even think it has to be still. It's like no matter yeah. before or since, this is the statement. MIA is followed. Correct. Yeah. So that's the only reason. I know I, I follow it. Yeah. I'm just saying if. if. Because I think that calls into question it probably needs to be still in a bunch of places then. Well, no, because they're not, they don't have to in all these other instances. Just, just if in the MIA. If a school is exempt. And visitors. Yep. Right. That's those two sentences. And in a health office. But we don't have, do, do we have the health office and the bus in this policy? We've been following that as federal law um, for the bus. And, right. And the, we don't have the but power it's not to in the policy. revoke that. Yeah. Does it need to be in the policy, Suzanne? We've been following that since day one. I believe it is in the policy. I just have to find it because I know that we've always said, um, I know, I, I believe it is here somewhere about having to wear. It says they'll give you a mask if you get on a bus, if you don't have one. It doesn't say it anywhere. So what about if on that sentence we add <laughs> student, faculty, and staff engaged in athletic activity uh, without saying athletic activities, say engage, are still required to comply with MIA league guidelines with regards to athletic activities, federal guidelines with regards to uh, bus transportation and whatever guideline controls the nurse's office. I think that's still federal. On, uh, in one line. Yeah, right where it says visitors, guests, and others mm -hmm. must be aware face having mm -hmm. federal law, whatever, buses, nurse's office, and then the MIA. And and it follows the chain, so it still makes sense. Yep. Yeah, standing, yeah. Right. They still have to follow all this. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we do. We're gonna have to come back then. Yeah. I, we gotta well, type we up do, too many changes. Well, we do have it in the policy that it says all the second paragraph is all individuals over the age of five years old, including students, staff, and visitors, on school transportation and in school buildings, shall wear a face covering that covers the nose and the mouth. Right, but that's not going to be the. That if, becomes 
obsolete, obsolete if, we if you if the remove it in the building. Well, you would only be removed. Well, I mean, you can come back, but I'll, I'll, the way that I would interpret that is that it's saying on school buildings, in school buildings and in school transportation, you have to wear your face covering. And then you have this one exception. Okay, and that's when on your second page, you're carving out a school building for the face covering because that's what DESE is allowing you to do. You're only doing it because DESE is allowing you to do this. Okay, right? so maybe that just needs to say in school out. buildings only. I don't know. Well, the nurse's office is part of the school building. Right. That's right. Yeah, I say list it out like just to make it like Marcy like, said. Like yeah, mm -hmm. just don't leave any question yeah. to be, you know, just but right there. We have to hold the vote then. Yeah. This is too much to unless uh, unless we can vote on we are going with number 1 and then we can clean up the language and I mean, unless you guys are comfortable, then I'll type that up correctly and we'll show it to you next time. Uh, whatever you guys want to do. Um, so. I would say we come back because this is actually the first time we're reading number one. So should we technically be voting on that? <laughs> this is like the 12th reading. Um, <laughs> Not of that number one. This is the first time. No, we're I know. 12th reading, reading of the policy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in all honesty, I anticipated this taking us a while to go through yep. what has also changed is when we got the attestation in from desi the modification for um for number one mm -hmm. and so now we need to be clear if we remove that from a bus and a nursing and an miaa perspective we're fine with that so um i think if we're okay and ms maybe wants to withdraw her motion um, <laughs> she might help us redraft this and we'll put it on the agenda for next week. Yeah, I didn't know about the nurse's office until today, actually. Yeah, right. no. So I didn't either. Right, and that's been the rules all, the rule really all along and the bus has been the rule all along. I think in fairness to what Mr. McDevitt said, um, when they extended the mass policy under mass general law, the 80%, yep. it was, it, it only impacted vaccinated students to be mask optional. And when we got the attestation on the 21st of January, which right. is January 21st, um, I spoke with Rob Curtin at the DESC, right. and he said, oh, this is a change that, um, you know, is different. That now it's up, to, you know, you can have a mask policy, but then it's up to the district, you know, locally can make a decision on um, whether it could be, you know, unvaccinated, strongly recommended, um, and that was the change. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, so uh, I withdrew my motion, and we will um, look at a tidied up version. If you see any other commas and stuff, just can you please let me know? <laughs> and right, Suzanne, so thank you, Suzanne, for all you. you've been doing with all this. I know it, it's, it's been a lot. It's a crazy weird policy, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, everything I keeps changing all the time. I think yeah. that's what makes it difficult. You can just send me, a, like I said, like commas. Like, I don't oh, think commas, not commas. Comma. No. Okay. Gotcha. Comma, sorry. Okay. Yeah, punctuation. Commas. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I think this goes to show too how valuable it is that MASC is is often drafting policy for us. So it's you know, it's been vetted and it's gone through and you know, sometimes we make changes to what they what they give us, but you know, we're kind of starting from scratch and it's a it's a much more challenging process. Right. Well it and it's gonna change conceivably building by building based upon Lots of stuff. Right. It's not a, a straightforward thing. On and the mandates in effect till the twenty eighth. That could change as well. Yeah, we could. And if you can remember, we were spending a lot of time prior to the attestation and the change on January twenty first, talking about how we would police this and how. Right. 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 Um, yeah. That would have been a disaster. So Amy, just one yes. point. Yes. The very last line before the policy will remain in place. That yep. seems to be repetitive. Repetitive. It is from okay. the other thing yep. up above. Right. Okay. And would you rather have it taken out? But we, because this is what we had originally, then we added it up here to right. be near the options. I just think it only needs to be in one place, like right. to Marcy's right. point, probably right after the. All right. Exemption. I like, because I like the last version. It's got more details yep. to it, personally. Yep. Okay. Okay. But I think our overall consensus is that we're going with one when you draft the new policy. That's, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if we have to, that's what I was going to go with unless I hear that we should discuss if people mm -hmm. don't feel that. Do we feel I mean, com Helen, I Helen was clear about her opinion. Do I we agree. feel comfortable with having Ms. Mabley draft this with 
Uh, option one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ms. Ricard, I'm assuming a nod. No. Okay. Yeah, I already Okay. Said that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I just. She, she was very yep. transparent I just, about I just, her opinion. I, yeah. Everything has changed, or you know, <laughs> like so. What you said eight minutes ago might not be true. Okay. Perfect. All right. And we'll. Uh, my my understanding when we put together the agenda was that the the old business C, 10 C, and 11 A would actually be two different things and two different kind of votes right. kind of going forward. Um, so. Uh, there is no 11A at this point. Right. Fair points. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. All right. We will. We're going to be here for a while, I think, with the public comment. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We're. Yep. Um, so, I I wanted to raise this part of our discussion, um, and I was not raising it in that discussion because I thought we were going on to 11. Um, okay. Other districts. Um, did a trial of a couple of weeks um, with masks being strongly recommended but not mandated. Um, and then they returned after a break to be wearing masks again. Um, I thought that I heard Ms. Barzak say that if the numbers were like they are now, after, um, you know, at some point in time after the break, they would be recommending. Um, removing the mask mandate in favor of highly recommending um, students and faculty wear masks. Um, I wondered if this committee was going to have a conversation about perhaps having a trial before um, February vacation, um, returning to masks after February vacation when we historically have seen upticks. The numbers needed to go down a little bit more. Uh, right. mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from the COVID task force, she was saying they would again be revisiting this as numbers continue to go down. Um, and, I mean, don't forget this past summer, we were at zero in town, right. um, not just right. one or six or something, you know, within a building. So. Do we know what we were last year at this time? It's on the chart. I don't know if anybody remembers. Sure. Uh, she did. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Th- this time last. Oh, I know. She was talking I about the fall. I think it was just the high school shut down. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Was well, that? In, for, I thought that was in December. That was before. It was December. Yeah. 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 I think we're in a different spot now. So, so that the, the COVID task force recommendation is based on um, wanting to see this trend continue for the next right. couple of weeks and then survive the break where people are traveling and then we come back and if it's still that same trend then the recommendation will be yeah yep yeah okay so this committee is not interested in a trial I'll, i'll share my opinion i i i thought it was interesting that some of the districts did that before thanksgiving because it was before all this holiday stuff and that's why going back to the mass kind of made sense i guess to see how it frankly, to see how people felt about it and if it caused an uptick prior to holiday. I don't see a benefit of a test at this point. I feel like taking the mask away and putting them back on is is too much um, trauma. <laughs> um, that's my opinion. I would just mention, just so it's clear, that those were the districts that already got the attestation right. at that time um, and you know adjusted their policy and took a vote to remove the masks. Or be mask optional. Right. 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 Yeah, and I'm I'm going to continue with the language of strongly, uh, highly recommending um, that students and staff wear masks. Yep. Right. Um, I'm I'm not in favor of mask optional or unmasking. That's not the vocabulary that I'm hearing from our public health officials. Um, so thank you for um, this conversation. Yep. Highly recommended is still yeah. what we have. And then the wording that we have here kind of makes it so we don't really need a trial because if something changes Dr. Gilligan can change it can, as needed. Right. I think so, I can bring them back. Right. That's bring them back saying, until right. the next meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Mem- member comments. I feel like we've we've all talked a lot. Um Ms. Picard 
Yes, um, I just wanted to follow up the student report where they talked about um, Black History Month and remind us all um, that there is Black History right here in North Andover. Um, our middle school has a wing named after Cato Freeman um, and the Freeman family. Cato Freeman was um, born in North Andover and enslaved from infancy. Um, he later um, gained freedom. Um, he was a musician. Um, he grazed his cows on the common. He was the first um, black man able to graze cows on the common in the North Parish. So um, black history is local history and black history is all of our history. So thank you. Thank you. Can I just back on something um, Ms. Picard said because she yeah. asked a question earlier about the master plan committee and I can see the confusion. She was nice enough to send me their agenda and it's, it's confusing because there's a facilities master plan too and there's also a townwide master plan committee which includes everything not just yeah. facilities. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's the one that she was referring to. Okay. Perfect. All right, Ms. Petrowski? Um, I don't have anything. I am very much looking forward to a snow day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Not for Hayroll teachers. Yes. No. No, they still yeah, have to report. Okay, well. <laughs> Ms. Vici? No comments, thanks. Uh, Ms. Mavis? Uh, I was going to bring up actually something similar to Ms. Picard. Uh, I get, I'm sure you guys as well, I get the libraries, announcements, and all these kind of things. And they put together with a lot of other agencies in our town a really amazing amount of information and activities for Black History Month, and that involved like the National, the Historical Society, um, the libraries. There's like many, many organizations in town got together to build like a, a roster of activities, and uh, I just thought I enjoyed looking at it today. And uh, there's a lot there, so check it out. Awesome. Uh, my last comment again, just uh, thank you to all of you for uh, your support with the budget uh, and uh, town manager and, and Dr. Gilligan and his staff. Uh, five point. Uh, 57.2 million is just uh, hard to believe that where we were a couple of years ago uh, and a lot of work still to go um, but uh, great progress and great steps with that and thank you uh, for your patience with the mass policy uh, it's difficult it's changing it's a lot of in interpretation as, as we move forward with this as well so I know it's been on the agenda for I feel like uh, yeah ever <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> that that was part of the plan um, although I still didn't think it would go this long so uh, thank you all for your patience uh, with that and with that being said I would entertain a motion to adjourn to our next meeting on February 17 2022 so motion made by uh, Ms. Vitsky second by Ms. Petrowski any discussion hearing none seeing none roll call Ms. Picard yes uh, Ms. Petrowski yes. Ms. Vitsky? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. We are adjourned five to nothing. It looks like uh, eight, 839. That's early for us. I know. Your robocall. You're going to call your student?